Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mega Powers Radio Money in the Bank pay-per-view pre-show. Really? <laughs> that was such a... That, that was like fiddle on the roof. I know. I could have sworn this was like coffee talk with Linda Richman. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting Klezmer music, Mike. You really fucking threw a curveball. <laughs> uh, that's exactly why I did. I don't think anybody expected the show to start that way. <laughs> so, in this show, the Mega Powers will combine, which is keeping kayfabe and smart out moment. Hosts from both shows will join together for this one evening to tell you all about our thoughts of the upcoming Money in the Bank pay-per-view, give you our predictions, and even take your calls live on the air to tell us what you think about what's going to happen on the show. And if you would like to do that at any point in the show, you could do so by dialing area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247. And tell you a little bit of who we got in the line here. I'm your host, Mike Payton, host of Keeping K Fabe, president of operations here at Mega Powers Radio, and a bunch of other things I do. By my side here, I got my co-host from Keeping Kayfabe, host of Geek Speak and Sportaholics Anonymous, and all-around manager agent dude, Brendan Ligon. Independent wrestler, dude. independent wrestling talent extraordinaire. And also underwear model. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I am wearing some, a lovely pair of Covington boxers right Ooh. now. Ooh. Boxers. Love Straight from the Sears men's collection. Well, fantastic. Also on the line here, I got the lead host of I Got Gameplay, the president of operations of NerdGenius.com, and probably other stuff, too. He is the king of England, Mr. Michael Burhan. I've never been announced the king of England before, but I think I should. I think I should overthrow the monarchy. Anybody who agrees with me, just call in. And we'll make some plans. Why well, um, haven't they made a, sh- a movie about that? Like, we've had not one, but two movies come out this summer about the White House being taken over. Why isn't there had, one of Parliament being taken over? We, we've had King Ralph, if that's... That's, that's... that's as close as they come. Yeah, that, that's John Goodman taking over, so there you go. Will, will it make you feel better if I sing God Save the King, Barhan, in front of you? <laughs> if you sing How about that Gila, I think that's going to be my <laughs> answer. Yeah, from the way our show started, I almost started. <laughs> I was expecting someone to lift me up in my chair. <laughs> Someone step on a, uh, uh, the glass to start this show. Uh, also on the line here, we got a regular from the Smart Out Moment podcast, a writer on Fanboys Anonymous, Mr. Drew White. What's shaking, dude? Uh, you know what's shaking. You know, corn holes. Wrestling. Corn holes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And lastly, well, I'm not even 100% if he's here, but the lead host of Smart Out Moment, the president of operations of Fanboys Anonymous, Mr. Out on Limbs from the Mango Tree. Mr. Anthony Mango. Weighing in at far too much and still having more food in his mouth. I was going to say friend of small animals and children everywhere. <laughs> no, no, he's he's been given a citation order because of that. <laughs> only, for the, only for the animal part. I'm still getting away with the rest. <laughs> order of protection against that sheep. Just remember, bah means no. <laughs> Yeah, but did you see what that kind of wool was wearing? I mean, I know, come it's on. really soft. I, I, I know what that's like. Just ask for it. Where is this show going? <laughs> <laughs> right down the shitter. I don't know. As does any podcast, he has it right to the dark place. Wait, wait, I, I got it. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go, our first you use of our favorite sound bite. You have to upload that onto the Dream Elite board so I can use that. Sure. Please. All right, guys, let's dig into the card here for Money in the Bank, eh? Okay. Unless anyone okay. else has any, uh, any animality jokes they want to talk about. <laughs> not fine. Yeah. Not top of my yeah. head. Bestiality. Get it right. <laughs> animality, like from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, right? They could turn into an animal. Uh, that's Animorphs. Oh. <laughs> I'm just confused. You have a finish him soundbite anywhere? <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Not, not yet. On, on the Dream Elite, there's a Toasty. Yes, there's the Toasty one. All right, so... The first match that we're going to have from WWE's pre-show, which I guess they're still calling the kickoff, is the tag team title match between the current champions, The Shield, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins, going against the Uso brothers, Jimmy and Jay Uso. We've seen the Uso brothers get completely reinvented over the last few weeks. They've started wearing face paint. They're actually getting a few matches on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, they're letting them do their whole intro again, rather than just having you know come back from commercial and we see them standing in the ring. The <laughs> Shield, you know, as great as they were, Three months ago, they, they've cooled down significantly. So uh, the fact that this match is even on the pre-show also makes me wonder, where is this going to go? Guys, I'll turn it to you. Where is this going to go? 
Somebody want to go first, or should I just say it? You, you add, Brayden. Okay. I, I don't think the shield has cooled off. I think it's plateaued. Uh, I really think they're we're just waiting for a team, uh, another strong tag team to go up against them. Right now, they just seem to be, you know, throwing fodder against them. I think the Usos were the really only legitimate tag team left in the division after Team Hell No. Or his face, a team tag team that could work as a face. Uh, so it's not cooled down. I'm just going to say plateaued, and it's all, it's also a question of time. You're going to these the Money in the Bank, two Money in the Bank ladder matches are going to take out at least an hour of the show. I'm assuming. I, I, so that's one hour devoted out of a three hour show to two matches. So you yes, know. but with twelve people. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Thir- Thirteen people actually. Yes, but. Again, some decisions had to be made. Someone had to do. Someone has to work the pre-show, and it's not going to be the Divas match because that's the the cool down for the crowd. So, you know, tag team match it is. They drew the short straw. I'm not really, you know, saying that this is the downfall of the Shield. Uh, Shield's going to keep going strong until there's some face tag team that will come up. Maybe a returning Air Boom uh, coming back very soon. Uh, but you know, it's not the end of the Shield of the Shield's rise yet. I think. Brian, what do you think? I think that this is just going to be a standard Usos match. They're being put in there to have a nice little lengthy feud with the Shield. They're probably going to lose this time, but they'll they'll come out of this looking good. They could have probably looked kind of strong in this match. In terms of what's in store for the Usos' future, I believe they're being booked as a legitimate team so that they can eventually win those tag team titles, but I don't think they will be winning them from the Shield. So I'm giving this to the Shield, Rollins, and Reigns. All right, Tony, what's your thoughts on this? I don't even think that they're going to look that great in it. I think that (laughs) this is basically going to be a standard Raw match where the Shield, they're the, the focal point of this anyway. So they're going to come out looking the better out of the teams. And uh, not only are they going to win, but I don't even think it's going to be as close as uh, Burham was saying. I think that this is going to be like maybe like a six-minute match. And it might be okay for that six minutes, but it's not going to really amount to much. If history has shown us anything, ever since they've been really making a big deal about this pre-show and always having one featured match on it, that match has always been extraordinarily short. It's like you have yeah. this whole half-hour show, and you have to squash this little match into four or five minutes. Right. I mean, look at WrestleMania. They had an Intercontinental title win, and it was virtually nothing in comparison to Dusty Rhodes rambling on about the pre-show and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lastly, Mr. Drew White, what are your thoughts on the pre-show match? Well, you know, you know, it's a, it's. I think it's what we said. You know, it's going to be about like five, six minutes long. Which, you know, they always show like these promos for the upcoming matches. Why don't they just like actually have a decently length match? Especially since if it's a team that's uh, actually means something with the Shield. So, you know, I expect the Shield to come on out on top, and it's like a five, six minute match at the most. And I'm going to make this a full round. The Shield is going to be coming out of this victorious. I like the Usos. I, I think they've had a fun little run here. Hopefully that they, you know, they're not going to just completely disappear after this is said and done. You know, maybe they can go on to work with, uh, I don't know, Road Scholars or the Wyatts or some other tag team that they got sitting around. And uh, you know, the Shield to go on and do their thing too. Who does the Shield face next? I don't know. Really, it's it's. There's really slim tickets. I think the I think the Uso feud was going to go on for a little bit longer than just this show. I think. You think this will be a SummerSlam match? Maybe. Maybe you know, like the the Shield win in a sort of dubious fashion, uh, which causes the Usos to have a rematch, some sort of maybe gimmick match, maybe even ladder match. Ooh, Ooh tag team ladder match with a bunch of Samoans in it. Maybe <laughs> good things might happen. Uh, yeah, I, I I just said I don't. There's a real lack of viable, legitimate face tag teams unless you're going to turn the prime time players face, which I would I think could happen uh, if they wanted to, just based on the charisma of Titus O'Neil alone. Um, so you know, I, it's there's just nobody else at this point, and and until Air Boom comes back, which will happen, I think eventually, uh, there's nobody else. Makeshift tag team. Makeshift again. Makeshift tag team really doesn't help them, you know, get over. No, but I think we're gonna end up getting two people that don't have a match at have SummerSlam match. getting thrown in with a tag team like uh, Randy Orton and Sheamus. Oh, I was about to say that. Didn't they already do that though? They yeah, but never they actually followed doing. through. They they hinted at it, but they never actually followed through on it. Yeah. Um. 
All right, so we'll, we'll close up talk on the Shield and the Uso. Sorry, Uso, it doesn't look like you've got any favoritism going for you in this match. Hey, at least they're getting on the, on the pay-per-view. This is true. As opposed to sitting and catering all night, so hats off. To they them. do look like they've been gaining weight. Well, I mean, they're Samoans. They, they, <laughs> that's their natural metabolism. It's, despite their racial handicap, they try. Mm. Mm. All right, so the first match on the actual card we will talk about is Y2J, Chris Jericho, going up against Cryback. This has Woo! just been an absolute mess. Ryback, ever since he's gone on his year-long losing streak, has just fallen been, absolutely yeah. down. It's been a full calendar year since Ryback has won a match on pay-per-view. And that was against two jobbers. I believe it was uh, Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even win any important matches when it comes to Raw, either. Remember, he had that tag, uh, not that tag, that um, WWE title shot against CM Punk. He lost that one. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he's the only person in maybe over a year that has forfeited a match. <laughs> to the Miz! Right. To the Miz! So his career is absolute crap for somebody who should be so by. much better. And you know what the saddest thing is? I, I got right back to winning this match. So do I. <laughs> so do I. With Vicky Guerrero, I think Guerrero's going to have a part to play in this. I don't think WWE's done with her yet. I hope not. I, I think she's going to have a major part to play in Ryback's career and the resurgence of his career. And if I'm right, I'm glad it's happening. But it's it, they've done a lot of irreparable damage and he's reverse. I, I don't think it's irreparable. I think you know a few a few good wins under his belt against you know people, someone someone anybody of significance will get people remembering that this guy can be. A legitimate could be booked as a legitimate monster. Um, I like the idea of putting Vicky with him. I think if you combine the heat that he gets now and the mega X Pac level heat that she gets from a crowd, I mean, I have I got literally got goosebumps from people booing Vicky Guerrero when I saw her at a house show. Uh, it's 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 insane the amount of the reaction she elicits from people. So if you combine that with you know people's natural disdain towards Ryback. Uh, it's going to equal some interesting television, I think. Uh, Drew, what do you think? You know, um, I, it's just that it seems like they found a way to make it look like that anyone could compete against Ryback right because, like, the past few matches he's had with The Miz, like, Miz is actually putting up a fight. And let's be, and uh, I believe Friday on SmackDown, he actually beat The Miz. But, you know, the, the way that he did it was, that, like, uh, he pretended his knee was bothering him again. And then he just closed on the Miz and do and did the shell shock. So I feel like he's might in this match he might do something to make it look like he's injured, but he's actually not. Uh, and Tony, I think you're the last one who hasn't really gotten your full word in. Now Ryback needs to win here. If he doesn't, then his career's over, and that this is their way of just kind of writing him off TV for good. Um, well, I think they've, the hyperbole bus over on the side of the highway. He's not done yet. They're, they've still invested a lot of money in developing that character. They're not going to just write it off yet. I hope that it's not. It's still that they, the intro. Like, they're not showing him already in the ring, you know, and his opponent, Ryback. You know, that's when his career is truly. <laughs> yeah, but who knows what if they start doing that after this match? You know what I mean? There is a chance that they can do that because they've done it before with a lot of other people. And granted, a lot of them were shit anyway, so it didn't matter. I mean, look at the careers that have uh, happened out of people like Heidenreich and all the other, like, big guys, the Nathan Joneses. Brockus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so many of them, it's ridiculous. Um, Ryback is better than that. He's not amazing or anything, but I would have been perfectly fine if he would have won the Royal Rumble. And I think a lot of people, even though a lot of people are kind of down on Ryback, I think a lot of other people would have agreed, too. It would have made sense. And... If they want to really make something out of him that isn't just, like, a total jobber guy, kind of like what Kali is, they need to have him not only win this match, but not keep doing the cryback thing. Uh, it, you know, it's going to be tough to, to get that killed, too, because it's really caught on. Right. And, you know, Jericho has a tendency to do that. But I absolutely agree with you. Royal Rumble was a time to strike with Ryback, and that was an absolute missed opportunity. I understand they wanted to get seeing the Rock together, they still could have done that. Have Ryback win the Rumble, then go for the world title and find another way to get Cena and Rock with each other. Have Cena win the, the Elimination Chamber. Why get yeah, it all away in one night? 
they could have avoided all of the whole snafu with Jack Swagger. And obviously, they didn't have a whole lot of faith in the Jack Swagger Alberta Del Rio program anyway, because right afterward, they had Ziggler win the title. So if they didn't really have that much built into it, they could have just had uh, Ryback against somebody else. I mean, Berhan and I had talked many, many times before about how it seemed like an obvious thing that they were going to have Big Show against Ryback. And that should have happened. Yeah. That, that totally should have happened. It's Ryback was one of those characters you need to keep him big, you need to keep him dominant, and you need to keep him winning. And the, when he started losing, that was taking away his credibility. Then he started losing constantly on pay-per-view against everybody, including John Cena. It just got to the point where you're like, okay, there's nothing else to get out of this guy. He's been thrown so far back that the only logical step for him to take after this, if he does win, would be to have Ryback go in the mid-card because there is no way he has any momentum to be a main eventer anymore, and it's kind of sad. Yeah, which, what the hell, he could have just won the U.S. title or something like that, and it would have been better off. I mean, he went from taking CM Punk and the three members of the Shield to just barely beat him to being in six-man tag matches with two other big guys and not being able to beat the Shield. Yeah. So he has to win here. If he doesn't win here, he's done. So what happens to Chris Jericho? Jericho goes off TV for a while. Comes back, maybe, I don't know. Uh, what's the pay-per-view after SummerSlam? Uh, after uh, Survivor Series? Uh, TLC? Is it maybe? still TLC? It fucking uh, better not be. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe he comes back around then. Builds but up a little champion? bit to the Royal Rumble again. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he just comes back after like the Champions or something. All right. Um, so if anybody else wants to call in and give us your thoughts on Jericho and Cryback, you can do so by dialing into the show at area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247 to join us here on the Mega Powers WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view pre-show. And with that, we will wrap up Jericho versus Ryback. Once again, it's an over-astounding favoritism towards Ryback, and it pains me because I'm a huge, huge Jericho fan, but it it just makes too much sense. So next, we'll talk about the Divas match. AJ Lee, the current Divas champion, defending her title for the second time against Caitlyn. Right? No, no, she won it last time. She won it last time, but I guess this would be her first title defense. This would be her first title defense. She's defending it for the first time against Caitlyn, but her second time facing her. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a Divas contract signing match, uh, not a match, but Divas contract signing on this past Friday SmackDown. Did anybody watch it, Drew? I, I did. Said you, you, could, could you give us a breakdown of what happened on SmackDown in this? Uh, pretty much, uh, AJ and Caitlyn come out. Teddy Long's out there because apparently I figured out where Booker T was. I guess he's had surgery or something, so he's off for off TV. I didn't know that. But anyways, uh, those three are in the ring, and then uh, a bunch of other Divas show up, all backing up Caitlyn. AJ's just like, "Oh, you don't want to do this." And then Caitlyn signed the contract, and then AJ pulled out her phone and started sending, talking about the messages Caitlyn sent to the secret admirer, and it pretty much just made fun of all the other divas. Uh, Caitlyn gets pissed off, uh, spears AJ, and then everyone walked out. Hmm. That doesn't sound as great as I had heard. Nah. No, no, AJ well, did a good job, and that's about it. Like all, the, I think... Uh, the only diva left that actually likes Caitlyn, I think it's just Layla, and I think all the other divas were kind of walking out of the ring, like Natalie, like she, like AJ made fun of Natalie for dating the great Kali, and uh, Cameron and Naomi for uh, being a part of that TV show. Like, yeah, people started like unfollowing Caitlyn like they have been for the past few weeks. Mm-hmm. I just think it's interesting that they're actually devoting screen time to the divas for so Usually, it's just like an afterthought. Like, oh, yep. This person gets a, like one build-up match to to establish them as the number one contender, and then they just go right into the pay-per-view match. No build whatsoever. It's just like, you know, so, it's, so they're actually putting a story behind this because they have two people that have a relationship that they can build the story off of. Uh, and I think that's why these matches are so good because uh, these two have that kind of friendship uh, off screen. So uh, I... Certainly one of the best Divas. Probably the best. No, no, not probably. It is the best Divas match of the year. By default. 
<laughs> Has there been any other Divas matches this year? I, I obviously there. I has. mean, what? Well, no. While Caitlyn was champion, there was not a Divas match on a pay per view for a few months. Oh, okay, yeah, you were. Or even on Raw. I remember okay. there was like a five week period where there was no Divas matches on Raw at all. Yeah, yeah. that was great. Huh. That yeah, was those great. are the good times. <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> those were the days. Um. So now that we've berated the match enough, what are you guys' thoughts on who's going to actually win it? <laughs> AJ. Yeah, AJ has to win. Yeah, they're devoting all sorts of merchandise to, to AJ, so I see her holding the Divas title for a very, very lengthy period of time. Yeah, AJ. AJ for the win. <laughs> and not just because it's my future ex-wife. <laughs> I'm also going to be going with AJ, and I think this will hopefully be pretty much the end of Caitlyn that we see for a while. Yeah, nope. I hope that she kind of goes. Maybe. You know what? I'd actually like to change that, and there's a reason being. I see Caitlyn by DQ. <laughs> okay. Just because okay. it, it draws this out further. I mean, no, I, it's not just that. It's the fact that they're going to go into that whole psycho bitch thing. Uh-huh. Um, and Aiden and, just, like, snaps on her and then gets her yeah, blood. Yeah. yeah. I could see that happening. And then that would set up a third match at SummerSlam. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I guess that'll wrap up AJ Lee and Caitlin. I didn't think there was going to be too much to say about that. Next we have for the Intercontinental title, the current champion, the new best in the world, the current best Paul Heyman guy, the third generation star, the son of Mr. Perfect, Mr. I almost called him Michael McGillicuddy. Curtis <laughs> Axel defending his Intercontinental title against The Miz, who's coming off a great victory off of Ryback on Raw. He came to play. Mm-hmm. Starting now, this moment, from this moment onward, Curtis Axel is going to retain. Just just from now? Yeah. Okay. So this, like, is the, this is the genesis of when he retains. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I was going to make that same joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> we all oh, my God, I'll cut I'm going to go D. Anyone, There's, no, go. Anyone, anyone have Miz to win in this? Anybody? No. <laughs> I don't think Miz even has Miz to win. <laughs> I think he's just pretty, pretty much there just to put on a good performance and uh, not screw up. I came to wow. the job. That, that, that's the Miz. <laughs> I came to job, exactly. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to say that the Miz is someone that they can rely to go in there, put on a good show, and not screw up? Uh, not. Hatch would be so up. disappointed with you. Not screw up at all. Hatch would be fucking pissed at me if I said that. I like the Miz. Yeah, I like him too. I like him on the microphone. I like him that's, a lot. That's clearly his his strongest aspect. Um, but sometimes he could be a liability in that ring. With I mean, look how many times he screwed up that figure four while he when the wow. yeah, well, he kind of makes it like a figure three. Yeah, but there was also that time when uh, I forget who he was facing. I think it was maybe Del Rio when he just like rolled them up and then switched it up right into a figure four. It was awesome. No, well, I'm not saying he's like the drizzling shits. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. I love that. Too. I know the drizzling shit. It's just great. It's a new finisher. <laughs> pro wrestling, <laughs> pro wrestling parlance. Um, you know, I'm not saying he's that bad, but you know, he certainly screws up the most mundane things. Like, I mean, I, even how he runs the ropes is just weird to me. I, I can't explain it. It just looks weird. From someone who you know trains sometimes, you know. Yeah. Any other thoughts on uh, Miz and Axel? Yeah, Axel's is... going to win, that's all. Axel's going to win and Paul Heyman will be hilarious. Yeah, that's about it. I think that this is going to be the other bathroom break. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to go make a sandwich during this match, too. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, we got a caller on the line. Caller Yay! from the 201 area code. Caller from 201, what's your name and where are you calling from? Mike, it is Dave. You should know what I'm coming from. Well, you should tell us when you're calling, asshole. (laughs) (laughs) This is David Castaldo, president of operations of Dream Elite Radio, where Keeping Kayfabe calls itself home. Dave, welcome to Mega Powers Radio, and welcome to our Money in the Bank pre-show. How you doing, dude? Not too bad in yourselves. Oh, absolutely tremendous. I can't speak for everybody here. Brendan's probably miserable. 
Yeah, I'm always He's always miserable. It's lack of sex. That's yeah. what I call it. Yeah, he's already yeah. always, always miserable. I already know that. So. This is, it is known, <laughs> sir. It is known. So uh, we were just wrapping up talking about The Miz and Curtis Axel. Tell us, what are your thoughts about uh, – well, go, go down the whole pay-per-view for us. What, what, are you, what are you expecting to see tonight? Well, I posted this up earlier, and I expect uh, pretty much everything that would be kind of, you know, obvious, like the Shield defeating Usos, Ryback over Jericho, AJ Lee defeating Caitlin. Uh, I said Curtis Axel over The Miz. I mean, I think they're going in the right direction with the Intercontinental title, with uh, Axel leading the way to kind of bring the prestige back. You know, you're bringing in a third-generation wrestler to kind of do that, but I think he has the pedigree in order to do so, and not only in the ring, but, you know, obviously his name carries uh, quite a heavy uh, weight behind it. Um, Miguel got a lot of letters. Yeah, well, Miguel Cuddy's a shitload of letters, but, but you know, I mean, you know, again, his father was probably the greatest intercontinental champion of the generation that we grew up in watching wrestling, and, you know, so, again, he carries a big burden, but I think he's got the right backing with Paul Heyman and the right timing to kind of do some good things. I don't see him, obviously, as a heavyweight title contender, but he's going to be pretty good in the mid card for a long time. But anyway, let me uh, look at the world title Money in the Bank match. I said either Barrett will win or don't be surprised if either Swagger or Cesaro take it for the sheer reason of you gotta keep, if you want to keep Zeb Coulter kind of on TV. And it'll be a good way to kind of keep him on. But, but I also pointed out with Dean Ambrose, I don't know, maybe you guys can fill this out for me. What was the money in the bank in which Drew McIntyre took part in? <sighs> what, what, was that was a WrestleMania, I believe. That was the one where Swagger actually won the yeah, case. So 26. Yes. Yes, at 2009. Okay. Basically, yeah, basically with 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 uh, McIntyre, everybody believed at that match that was his coronation because he was the chosen one, hand picked by McMahon and Triple H to do good things for the company. And obviously, we've seen what his career has become of since then. Uh, really? This is kind is of that same thing with Dean Ambrose. Him? No, well, same I, thing I, with I Dean disagree. Ambrose, but I, I don't think his, I don't think his career is going to go down the toilet like McIntyre's has. But every every smart out there is believing that this is his coronation uh, and his push into the heavyweight title picture, which I don't think this is it yet. Um, Barrett's kind of overdue, you know. I don't know. I don't know what will happen. You know that that's this is the beauty of this Money in the Bank match. You truly don't know who will take it, but there's so many ways that it can go. So that's what I like about that Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. The, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I, I, I was agree. I was agreeing with you. The, the world heavyweight title ladder match. It, it, it's really like almost any person in there has a shot at getting that. There, there's no person that you could look at and be like, "There's absolutely zero percent chance of that guy winning it." As long as it's not Fandango, I can care less who wins. I, I anyway. actually think Fandango has a shot, but I, I'll get into that mm. later. You, you go ahead and finish your wrap up. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. I mean, I also put for the WWE title Money in the Bank match the All Stars. Uh, if they replace Kane, I believe it might be Mysterio. The rumor that's been going around is that Mysterio will go in. Uh, if Mysterio's in, I have a very bad feeling that he'll take it. But if not, I, I still feel very strongly, no matter who's replacing Kane, Daniel Bryan takes it. Um, this is a little more predictable. Just a lot of bigger names in this match. Just kind of predictable in which way their booking wants to go. That's just my opinion. Uh don't care about the world title match, but I still say Del Rio defeats Ziggler just to keep that going for a little longer. And then I say John Cena defeating Mark Henry for the WWE title. Not, you know, not a big fan of that. However, they could keep it going, uh, but at the same time, that the way that they're building Mark Henry, at this is the only title that's eluded him his entire career. It's hard not to, it's hard to pick against him, but I still say Cena defeats Mark Henry for the title. To close out their show. Hmm. He's just going with. Uh, you, you think it's just going to be, uh, you know, keep pushing the paper all the way to SummerSlam show, and you're not expecting anything huge to to blow people's minds. Not really. I mean, you know, I've even said this to a couple of friends of mine. Money in the Bank, in my opinion, has taken the place of SummerSlam being the event of the summer. So you really never know what will happen. I, I don't. You know, I don't expect anything spectacular, though. I don't expect, like, how Kane cashed in, you know, 
a few minutes later after winning his Money in the Bank contract um, or anything of that sort. It would be interesting, but I, I don't foresee it happening unless, say, Barrett wins and cashes in against a Ziggler who just wins the championship. You know, I, I don't know, you know, but anything's possible, I guess. Hmm. All right, Dave. Uh, one final question I would want to pose to you. We were just talking about it before. Yo. Where does the shield go after the Usos? Uh, I don't know. The only tip, of, the only real guess is the Wyatts because after they debuted and destroyed Kane, where do they go? You know, it's just like they made this great impact, this great debut. You know, where everybody was behind it in the arena, despite the Husky Harris champs. Um. <laughs> That's the only logical thing, I think, between the two trio teams to go against one another, but it almost seems like they'd be pushing it too soon, and then after that, where did, where did either of them go? You know? But unless they make it so that the shield breaks up because of the Wyatts or something, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about this, is, Dave? If they, do, if they do some kind of a multi-team match, at Survivor, uh, not Survivor Series, SummerSlam, where they have, because they have a lot of teams right now that are heel, which is odd, but we have the primetime players, we have uh, right. tons of funk, Usos, mm. we saw a little bit of Road Scholars and um, Coulter's, whatever they're calling it, Coulter's Militia, I think they're... Camp Coulter. They're Camp Coulter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they kind of hinted at that little a little bit, and with the money in the bank, they're showing that they're not too opposed to having heel on heel matches. I mean, everybody in the one money in the bank, they're all heels. So, what if they had right. some kind of like Shield and all the other tag teams all in one big match? Would you be interested in that? Well, are you kind of alluding to WrestleMania 14 where they had that big tag team battle royal, something like that? Yeah, something along those lines. I mean, you know what it is with the tag team division? I've always been a big fan of tag team wrestling, and the fact that there's actual teams in the WWE the most, oh, God, in years, since, like, the early 2000s, uh, I think that's a great thing for a wrestling period because, I mean, you look at it historically, a lot of teams have been built from, or a lot of big single stars have been built from tag teams. Uh, I would be interested because at No Way Out, the Four Corners tag match, I believe, stole the show, and I was there alive. That was yeah, awesome I, was, I was there, too. Because, Everything else yeah, was terrible, and that match wasn't even promoted hungry. beforehand. Right, but they were hungry. All four of those teams were hungry. They wanted to steal the show, and they went out, and they stole the show. They all wanted it. And you know what, though? I mean, I'm a firm believer. I like where Triple H's uh, regime is going so far with the uh, Performance Center opening and the whole nine yards. I think this is a good time for those guys to kind of make a splash because if people can get interested in tag team wrestling again, then they could be pushed to the moon. So I would be interested in seeing a match like that because those teams are going to want to steal the show, and I'm using my no way out theory as to back up my my thought. Man, and when was the last time, like you think about back in the day, all the greatest main eventers had come from some type of tag team. You know, your Shawn Michaels, your, your Bret Hart's, to Bret a lesser Hart. extent, even like your Undertakers and your Steve Austins came from tag teams. Yes. You, know, the, yeah, you don't I mean, see that anymore. Yeah. Who, when was the last time that happened? Uh, yeah. Edge, maybe? Edge, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Edge is obviously a part of that group. He's a legend and everything, but that hasn't been something in a long, long time. Zack Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that, though, this is the problem. They keep going to that world. They, they, they kept using that as a way to build the next big star, but it never worked because every tag team became a, a vehicle for one guy to, to make a name for himself. I think the only time that's ever actually worked was with the Miz and Morrison when they were a tag team, and that's freaking ages ago. Uh, that also, that, but that reversed on everybody. Everybody thought Morrison was going to be the one to break through as the single star, but lo and behold, he's not working for the WWE anymore. The Miz is. And the Miz but, defeated John Cena at WrestleMania. Who saw that coming? Yeah. <laughs> That match was terrible in its own right, but besides that, I don't know. I mean, but, you know, I don't know who made the comment about using the tag teams as, like, the format, like, the go-to, but it's worked, though. It has a proven track record. You know, the other half of the team may not fare out well, but it's worked for bringing in those stars. 
And you know what? For teams like the Hart Foundation, even look at Strike Force after you know before they split Martel and Tito Santana oh, and all those back. teams. Strike Force reference. Both guys in yeah. the Commonwealth Champions. <laughs> Better yeah. off than well, you look at, uh, the, uh, you look at Bulldog and, and the Dynamite Kid, the British Bulldogs. You know they mm-hmm. they built up. They both could have carried singles careers on their own in the WWF if you know they allowed it to, but. You know, it works. I mean, people are obviously going to get behind one person or the other, and that's kind of their WWE's way or any wrestling promoter's way of saying, "All right, this will be. Let's give this guy a shot to be our next big star." And you know, other than a couple of you know, past, uh, bad judgment calls, it's worked, and it's built big stars. So let's just see who comes out of these next mold of tag teams to be that next big single star. Uh, that's just my yeah. opinion, but then again, teams like the Useless will be a team for life. Uh, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Same thing with primetime players. They're nothing that special. You know, what, what's his name? Titus O'Neil has a little something special, but he just needs a little work. Just a little, and that's why a tag team is perfect for a guy like him. You can pair him with somebody who can fill in those roles that he can't fill so well. That's why the right. tag team needs to keep going, so a guy like Tennis O'Neill can still be on my TV, because I miss him. Horror. A lot more horror. Cake Patterson. Horror, 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 horror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Dave, anything else in nope. your mind about Money in the Bank? Nah, I'm just hoping for a good show, and my theory on it being the event of the summer doesn't disappoint me, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Are you excited for the return of Rob Van Dam? Yes, I am. Uh, let's just hope he lasts more than a couple of years without getting busted for weed. So, well, I was well, reading hey, a news story today. Up, team of Swagger and RVD, weed the people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Evan Bourne can be with them too. It could be another trio. Oh, and they be awesome. the oh man, he could be not only another trio. I mean, there's so many other people that you could post on there. Sabu, you can bring him in to be a part of a group. Oh man, They've we could bring that Chronic. <laughs> well, okay, isn't Brian dead? Uh, well, we can Evan, dig up Brian Adams. It'll be fine. But Evan Bourne in that group, I don't think that really has a leg to stand on. Uh, <laughs> I had to. Besides, he, he would probably make uh, a fake knockoff group anyway. Yeah. Too soon. Nah. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good rest of your show. Thanks for having me on, and I'll talk to you all later. Thanks a lot, Dave. Too. Thanks for calling in, man. Talk to you later. Enjoy the all pay-per-view. Right. All right, take I love you. Bye. All right, if anybody else would like to join in and tell us your thoughts about the upcoming WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view, you could do so by dialing in area code 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247. Shout-outs once again to Mr. David Castaldo from Dream Elite Radio, home of Keeping Kayfabe, for giving us a call in and giving us his little rundown of what's going on with tonight's events. Let's return to our rundown of tonight's events. And next match I would like to do actually is the World Heavyweight Championship championship title match between current champion Alberto Del Rio defending the title against Dolph Ziggler. Now, we had a bit of a double turn in the title match that they had at Payback where we saw Alberto Del Rio win his World Heavyweight title back. Here is Dolph Ziggler's rematch to try to get it back in his hands. Really, the biggest thing we've seen develop over the last few weeks is that Alberto Del Rio has unfortunately lost Ricardo Rodriguez. (gasps) So, guys, let's uh, see where you stand with this. bonus. Brandon, what's shaking on you, man? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a feeling if any if any match is going to result in a cash in of of the Money in the Bank, it's going to be this one. So I'm gonna result hold final judgment on on that towards the end. I think this is gonna be a good match because uh, uh, the talents are involved. Um, I I want Ziggler to win. I I I, I think his time is now. Now is the time to strike while the iron is hot on this, just like Daniel Bryan. People are behind him. Uh, merchandise sales is there. Everything is there. It's the perfect storm. Give him the title. Whether or not they're going to actually get, put a lengthy title run on him, yet to be seen. But I think he finally wins the belt from Del Rio be- just, just because. All right. We got a new person joining us here on the line, Mr. Sean Walker. Sean, I will pass it off to you. What do you have planned to happen here in Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio? Uh, well, not a lot. Um, I think, well, I, I want Dolph to win because I don't like Alberto Del Rio. Um, he just bores me to sleep. And I reckon the cash is going to come in the WWE 
match, not this one. I reckon Alberto is going to win, and it's going to go to SummerSlam. All right, Mr. Michael Burhan, your thoughts on this match? We could see the distance of AJ and Big E from Dolph and have them cost him the match, um, which may happen. But I don't know. I don't know. I really want this to be Dolph's big win, that he finally wins the championship on his own without any like cheap heel tricks. And I, I believe that the title change that was done before um, was done so that it could establish a reversal between the two and turn Ziggler face and turn Del Rio heel. But it's, it's very it's very different and it's hard to predict because usually when something like this happens, you would have Del Rio win the next match and then a, a big long feud go on between the two of them. But I just don't see Del Rio holding the title for long. Not at all. And if he does, then we probably will see the next big cash-in where someone may turn face by defeating Del Rio. Um, if he doesn't and Ziggler retains, we could see the next big cash from someone defeating Ziggler and holding the title and, and sort of eluding Ziggler at this time. But, we, you know, it it would be a great idea and a great way to have Ziggler keep chasing the next person who holds the championship. You know, that title really hasn't seemed to have a lot of direction for this whole entire year. I mean, it's changed hands so many times. It's felt like WCW 2000. <laughs> Not really. I think that there's been reasons. There have been reasons why that title has been coveted so much. And I think uh, the fact that it has changed hands so many times and there's been so many challenges for the World Heavyweight Championship is a testament to the fact that most people want this title. Um, with the WWE Championship, there's only been really four guys that have held it. Cena, Punk, Rock, um, and, you know, no, three guys. Yeah, Cena, Del Punk, Rio. and Rock. Oh, Del Rio, Del Rio held Rio. it for a cup of coffee. Yeah, but no one really wants to talk about Del Rio. It's sort of the give him a legitimate MITB cash in. But yeah, so you have four guys that have held that championship. Whereas the World Heavyweight Championship has sort of been tossed around a little bit from Big Show to Del Rio due to Show's contractual status. But I think that cemented Del Rio as a face when they did that. It was an awesome match when he originally captured the championship on SmackDown and gave SmackDown that big uh, emphasis. Then when it he got that taken away from Ziggler, and Ziggler finally cashed in. People went crazy. Um, and then having Swagger involved in the title scene, and um, at one point you had Henry involved in it as well. It, it just shows how many people wanted this championship and how big this championship is. And by having another person inserted into that picture, it's fine by me, because we can see if the next guy to hold it is going to be the next big star in the company, or if they're just going to flail like... Swagger did. All right, Drew, your thoughts on Del Rio and Ziggler? Hmm. Well, for one, I think Ziggler will win. Not by DQ. He will win the championship back. But I feel as soon as he wins it, I do believe one of the – because I think the SmackDown money – not the SmackDown, the World Heavyweight uh, Championship uh, money in the big match will lead off the show. I believe this is where the uh, AJ and Big E turn on Ziggler – leading to a cash-in, and then Dolph will go into that kind of feud with uh, whoever wins the Money in the Bank and Alberto going into SummerSlam. All right, and lastly, Tony, your thoughts on Ziggler and Del Rio's. I really want Ziggler to win, and he isn't going to. I've been saying it for a while. I think WWE is going to have their change of heart that they've had in the past with other people, and they're going to take this opportunity to make Ziggler lose, um, either you're going to see Big E and AJ walk away from Ziggler during this pay-per-view, or he's going to leave them, or there's just going to be something on Raw. But we're not getting past this episode of Raw coming up with the three of them being a unit. And I think that we're going to see him in some random match, either with Big E as, like, almost a bathroom break match at SummerSlam or in some other kind of a random kind of spot. I don't think he's going to be touching the main event for a little while longer because they're going to do this kind of, well, we like Del Rio in this spot right now and we'll build towards somebody else. I don't think anybody's getting cashed in on. I think everybody's going to be disappointed if they're expecting a lot of stuff to happen. Now, granted, I expected 
Ziggler to just retain at the last pay-per-view, and uh, that crazy shit happened. So they might have something planned, and I hope that they do. If they don't, and they're just going to follow the thing that I'm afraid that they're going to follow, Ziggler doesn't have a chance until the Royal Rumble. Really? Yep. All the way till then? Yep. He'll be in mid-card feuds, and he'll be putting people over, and he'll win a match here and there. He might be, like, the sole survivor at Survivor Series, but not in the main event. They've, they've done all that already, though. I know, but you I think... You think they're going to keep doing that? Yep, because I think that they've shown in the past that they have no problem halting somebody from being in the main event if they've got other people that they can do. Like, they've got CM Punk now. They've got Del Rio that they aren't going to give up on. They haven't had Sheamus in a main event for a while. So they might be looking at this as, well, we've got Randy Orton and we've got Sheamus, and they haven't been in a world championship match in a while. Let's have them against Del Rio, even though we've seen it a thousand fucking times. Because think about how WWE does this. They They do things based off of what they think that everybody wants to see. And they think that the couple people that they view as big stars are the big stars, and nobody else can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, Daniel Bryan's taken all this time, and he's still not that guy yet. He might be at the end of this pay-per-view, but he's still not. And Ziggler, for years, everybody was going, why isn't he in the main event? And it took another Money in the Bank situation for that to happen. And even then, he wasn't... Look at what he was at at WrestleMania, in a tag team match that he lost. But again, they do that because, as we've all kept stating before, um, they put a guy to a lower level, like what they've done with Barrett, for instance. They've left him at a low level before bringing him up. They end up jobbing out to nearly everybody before cashing in. It's happened with Punk, happened with Brian, happened with Del Rio. Mm -hmm. You know, it's happening with Barrett as we speak. That's why I think it's going to happen again with Ziggler. I don't think so. I think I they're not. gonna they're gonna put him as the big face on SmackDown. Which, if they do so, they'll probably leave guys like Orton and Sheamus going after the WWE Championship. Well, here's my rundown for this. I see Dolph Ziggler winning this match. However, at the conclusion of this match, we're gonna see the World Heavyweight Championship contract Money in the Bank winner come out and cash in his money in the bank. Now, whether that person wins that title off of Ziggler or not depends on who it is that wins that briefcase. But I can see this helping Ziggler in either way. You know, if he wins both against Del Rio and against the briefcase winner, he's that much more of a triumphant hero overcoming all of those odds. If he wins against Del Rio but then manages to lose it, then he gets a lot of sympathy because he was taken advantage, and then he can keep follow that up going into whatever feud he needs to do with the person who won the briefcase. Yeah, do you think that that's going to be a Fandango? If no. it's Fandango, well, let, let's transition into the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. So since we're going to be talking about that. You picked up my uh, my little cue there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, Good job. All right. So <laughs> in the Money in the Bank ladder match that doesn't have an official name, it is for the World Heavyweight Championship contract that they can be cashed in any time for a calendar year after the conclusion of this match. We have seven participants, and they are Antonio Cesaro and Jack Swagger representing Camp Coulter. Fun dunk. I just got knocked out by Wade Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Ambrose, Damian Sandow, Cody Rhodes, and Wade Barrett. Guys, I'll pass it on to you to give your picks for this. I don't need to introduce this much because there's not much to introduce. So, Drew White, your thoughts? Oh, shoot. Well, I know most of you guys are going to be picking Wade Barrett, but honestly, uh, oh, but, are you we? Know, <laughs> I honestly don't know. But anyways... I think this is a bit more wide open. I mean, we have like there's like five guys who actually have a shot. I don't think Cesaro or Swagger have any shot of this, mainly because Swagger's past issues, and I don't think Cesaro is ready yet. And you know, I could you know I could see him giving this to Fandango as like you know a little bit of sympathy for him getting a concussion, but I don't think he's gonna win it. Um, you know, if I had to pick two people who I think would have a shot, I'd say either Barrett or hmm. I'll go with Sandow, and I and I'll go with Sandow with the win here. All right, Tony, your thoughts? I'm still going with Barrett. I think um, if anybody wins other than Barrett, it has to be Sandow or Rhodes. And between the two of them, I can kind of see Cody Rhodes being the one who gets it a little bit more, just to edge it out. Because if he 
and Sandal break up, I think Cody's the one getting the face turn, and that's the one that's going to have probably more momentum going into it. Um, but I still think that the the Sandow and Rhodes um, secondary spot is far away from Wade Barrett being number one, and then everybody else is extremely far from being uh, in spot number three. I don't think they that could, they could I, tease a, a Sandow Rhodes heel turn by having Rhodes win the ca- the Money in the Bank briefcase. That's that's such a good idea. They might do something like that, but I actually think that they're going to break up because the two of them are going to be fighting for the chance, uh, the chance to get it, and neither of them are going to get it because of the fact that they were fighting. Um, now, what were you going to say about the other guys? The other guy that's number three, I guess you could say, even though you can kind of count um, two and three being the same thing, is Dean Ambrose. A lot of people think Dean Ambrose has no, uh, like, there's no competition for Dean Ambrose here. I think he doesn't stand much of a chance because he's got the U.S. title. Yeah. And he's not doing too much with the U.S. title. It's not like he's got this amazing run that has a lot of momentum going for it. So they just want to kind of like, um, I guess I guess this is a horrible comparison, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. The way that they gave the U.S. title to Goldberg when he had his uh, unstoppable streak going on, that was kind of like, let's give him the little thing and then keep building up. I think yeah. Dean Ambrose winning the U.S. title was let's give him the U.S. title because we don't have anybody else and that gives him something to do and because he's, you know, he's good and everything. But they weren't giving that to him as we'll give him that and in the process build him up to the main event. So I think that if he were in a better position right now, he would stand a better chance, but he's not. So he's going to just retain the U.S. title for a while and keep doing that. Um, everybody else, I don't think they even have necessarily that spot where it looks like they're going to win. All right, with that, Burhan, I know you're anxious to get your your picks out there. So who do you think is going to win the World Heavyweight Championship contract? Money in the Bank ladder match. The thing is, I've got an investment in two guys in this match. Um, <laughs> truthfully, in Rose uh, and also in Ambrose. Um, if either wins, then Team Burhan is going to be like awesome. But I don't see it. Um, reason for Ambrose, again, I agree with Tony in, in terms of the U.S. title. I think that's his thing. That They're going to try and revolve that division around him uh, if they do so, and that would be awesome if they did. Rhodes, uh, again, if they give it to Rhodes, he, this would probably initiate a face turn. Um, it could build into him winning the championship off of Del Rio, and then feuding with Sando over the title, maybe like having Dorio and Ziggler involved in that, that would be an awesome way of doing it, an awesome way of elevating Rhodes, uh, and also some a way to pay homage to his father by having him win the title that his father coveted so many years ago. Because they they put now they've they've added that lineage onto the title from the vignettes for that Raw where they had the, both the World and, and WWE Championship exhibited. They had loads of those vignettes going on with that title, and it, it would be awesome for him to pay tribute to his dad by doing so, um, hence the, the whole same thing they had with McGillicuddy and the IC Championship. Um, with anybody else in that group, I can see Barrett win, and the reason being, Barrett is ready. He's ready for um, the, the championship, he's ready for a run, he's ready to be that next guy who feuds with Ziggler, and I believe the reason why they've buried him so much at this point is to get him to the point where he is going to get this championship. You know, it for me, he's the one guy who hasn't said much, but has led with his actions. You know, I remember we saw Fandango doing his name figure, then Barrett just punched him in the face and knocked him unconscious. I think it was his way of uh, showing dominance over everybody. Uh, Swagger, he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> Cesaro, he doesn't stand a chance uh, based on the fact that he's not ready to be at that level yet. And neither is Swagger, to tell you the truth, because he's shown that he can't be trusted at that level. Uh, and again, it's nothing to do with the fact that he was smoking weed. It was mostly due to the fact that he was doing it and driving at the same time, which, uh, again, is another story. Um, in terms of anybody else that I could see win the MRTV briefcase, it would probably have to be one of those three um, that has the, the, the biggest chance. Everybody else, no way. 
All right, Drew. Your oh, we already did Drew. Yeah. Uh, Sean, that's what mm. I wanted to go to next. Sean, what is your pick for the world heavyweight title ladder match? I reckon Fandango is going to win it. Yes. Thank yep. goodness. Somebody else has a little bit of a brain on their shoulders here. I reckon it's going to be. I reckon he's going to steal it. I reckon Cody Rhodes and Sando is going to be up on top of the ladder, and then Cody Rhodes does the crossroads off the top, and then Fandango just scurries up the ladder and takes it down. What do you think he's going to do with that briefcase? Hopefully cash it in. Tonight? <laughs> I reckon he's going to be the first person to lose it, mm-hmm. to be honest, because um, WWE needs a guy to actually lose it that way, and I reckon he's going to be the guy to lose it that way. Uh, and I'm actually glad you said that. I very much agree with that. They need a guy to lose that Money in the Bank briefcase. And yes, I know, I know John Cena lost it. But it's not the come. same. It's not the same as a guy that's like rising as a rising star and you think it's gonna be his his step into that next level. Fandango I think is the perfect person to do that with. Have him yep. come out like I said, with Dolph Ziggler just got his big victory, Fandango comes out all confidence, does a little dance, and then Dolph Ziggler hits the zigzag, or better yet, the super kick and defeats him and then all was for naught. Fandango completely messed it up. Yep. <laughs> that's why I believe. All right, Brandon, your thoughts. Well, uh, I love Drew's act. I mean, I love, uh, God damn it. Sean. Sean, <laughs> thank you. There you go. I thought I was about to get some love. Sorry, sir. Sorry. I'm a pothead. I'm not good with names. <laughs> um, All right. Continue. I'm not going to offend the two British people on the, I don't mean to offend them by doing this, but the time for Wade Barrett has come. <laughs> I don't think Fon Dango <laughs> is going to win the title or win the Money in the Bank briefcase. Because holding a briefcase will prevent him from dancing around like a nonce the entire time. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, that was kind of on point. I, I probably need to coach you a little bit more on the inflection of the voice, but, you know, you're getting there. I, I think I have it. Like I said, I've watched enough football in my day, watched enough Monty Python. I've watched <laughs> uh, Ricky Gervais in my life where I have the accent pretty much down. I could do regional accents, too. I could do an Irish accent, too. Okay, now you two do an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do an American accent? You just have to talk. Talk like John Wayne. That's basically an American accent. Just do John Wayne. That's everyone's American accent. Hello, Pilgrim. Hello, Pilgrim. Hello, Pilgrim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, my picks for this, I am going to be agreeing with Sean. I actually think Fandango has the top chance of coming out of this, for the reasons we stated above. My second place for it would be a member of the Rhodes Scholars, most likely Cody Rhodes. I mean, this guy, it's it's time for him to make that leap. People are behind him. People love the mustache. It's time for them to move on from Rhodes Scholars, for them to do their own things. And I think Cody Rhodes has the better chance of moving up rather than Damian Sandow, who I think needs a little bit more time to simmer at the level he's at. I mean, we never really gotten a chance to really get to know and love the real Damien Sandow, you know? He needs a good um, singles run with a mid-card championship, I believe, before he even goes for the, the top prize. Has and he in, been in a real storyline that wasn't no. Road Scholars related at all? No. Ever? no. Sheamus. Apart from the Seamus thing. And I don't believe that was done to elevate uh, Sandow. I, I believe it was just done because Seamus had nothing else to do. Um, in terms of Sandow, he'll probably, uh, again, as I've stated, if Rhodes wins it, they'll probably will feud um, over the World Championship at some point. But then he'll probably get thrusted back down to the mid-card where he wins his first singles mid-card championship, which, you know, truthfully, I think he would he would do well in. He would excel in. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to wrap up our talk about the World Heavyweight Championship contract, Money in the Bank ladder match. Finally, we got a match that we're a little bit more split on what's going to happen here. I'm happy to see that. Hopefully, we can get something really surprising and something that we all could be happy with with that match. Just to let everyone know, once again, you can call into the show and tell us what you think is going to be happening on tonight's WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view by dialing to area code 760-512. 7247. That's area code 760 512 7247. This is the Money in the Bank pre show here on Mega Powers Radio. Guys, we got two more matches left. First thing I want to talk about is the other Money in the Bank ladder match. They're dubbing it the Money in the Bank All Stars because these are all former main eventers or current main eventers, however you want to say it. Uh, Randy Orton, Rob Van Dam, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Christian, and Sheamus. We'll go back around the horn, letting you guys get your picks in this. Tony, I'll let you start first in this one. Who's your pick for the All-Stars? RVD. 
<laughs> that was easy. So... Yeah, RVD wins. He cashes in on John Cena. This is Philadelphia. You know, that would be a great place again. to do something like that. Again? Again? Mm-hmm. And I sit there and go, uh... Because <laughs> I do not want to see RVD as the champion. I don't even want to see RVD, period. But uh, I don't think that this is going to be... I mean, if anybody else wins, it's going to be Daniel Bryan. And even though I'm very confident in trying to guess RVD winning... It's about 60-40. Um, Daniel Bryan's the, the secondary person who could end up winning this. And if they do end up having that, it'll be, I would think, the better option. But I think that there's an extremely good chance that you see RVD turn heel here. All right, guys, I'm going to hold off on the talk on this for just a moment. we got a caller on the line, caller from the 661 area code. Caller from 661, what's your name and where are you calling from? Well, guys, this is the 5 Star man, Chris the Dace <laughs> man, Dace. What's and up, I heard dude? you guys talking about the. I heard you guys talking about the money in the bank ladder match, and I had to get in there, shrug, 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 and tell you <laughs> that Rob Van Dam's gonna win tonight. <laughs> that actually was a pretty good RVD impersonation. <laughs> uh, well, he does the whole spiel. He, he knocks it out of the park, man. So you're you're 100 percent confident. And you're with Tony that Rob Van Dam is gonna be taking that money in the bank tonight. He's gonna be taking the whole. Effin show, brother. Do you think he's going to get the title, too? Tonight? Uh, no. No, I don't no. think that's going to happen. Do you think he's, he's going to be like last time and cash in in advance the honorable way? Well, honestly, I think he's going to he's gonna take that briefcase. He's going to go over the Walt Whitman Bridge and cash it in in Camden and get himself a nice big bag of pot, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, tell me how much money really is in this thing, man. I don't like to count. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, like, how much pot you want? This? Shrug. <laughs> uh, who else you got picked for tonight, man? Who do you think's winning the uh, almost called the SmackDown one, the World Heavyweight Title contract match? The World Heavyweight Title uh, contract match. I think it's going to go to none other than the Mustache Cody Rhodes. Mm. Is that is that because he's your son? <laughs> it's, it, yes. The American Dream needs to watch out for his uh, son, brother. Because he's going to ride down on his bicycle, and he's going to go, whoa, brother, to the bicycle. Oh, and as a, side note, as a side note, uh, they're actually doing the pre-show match on pay-per-view. I'm watching the Usos right now. And they're not doing it wow. on just uh, YouTube? Nope, that's on the uh, the actual pay-per-view channel, which I find awesome. About time they put back to that. Uh, yeah, so, happened since uh, free for all days. So, Chris, uh, what about the the uh, actual title matches? Who you got between Del Rio and Ziggler and Henry and Cena? Uh, unfortunately, I, I think it's going to be uh, Del Rio's going to take it when it comes to the World Heavyweight Title, and I think Cena's going to retain as well when it comes to Henry. I think Henry's just a filler to give Cena something to do until SummerSlam. You expecting any surprises tonight? Uh, no, just Rob Van Dam uh, smoking some pot. <laughs> That's no surprise. Yeah, that's what, say. what kind of surprise is that? That's a terrible surprise. Everyone knew that was happening. Yeah, Rob, who are you going to cash in? Well, I'm going to cash in on Shrug. Cena, Shrug. Because I'm surprise Rob for him. Van Dam. I'm going to cash in on Chef Boyer D. <laughs> I think Van Dam's so high, he's going to try to cash in on like the Divas match. Like, oh, I liked it because there was wings on the belt. <laughs> <laughs> He catches it in TNA by mistake. He's <laughs> like, I could have sworn it was Jeff Hardy's belt, man. I thought I was going to get me some good titles. <laughs> We're rock stars, man. Oh, all right, Dace, man. You want to hang out with us for the rest of the show here, or you want to get back to your business in the basement? Uh, I'm going to get back to my business in the basement, and that might be fapping, but that's that's just between me and everybody on the Internet. Okay. All right, man. Well, thank you for calling in, man. I'll show you give your show a shout-out before this is all said and done. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank I'll you. See you a, I'll see you in a minute, Dace. Check out Dace on Chatterbait. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was Chris Dace. You can catch him here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. here on Mega Powers Radio for the Dace Man Show. So if you want to hear that funny man's opinion on the world of celebrity, sports, nerd-type stuff, and whatever else he decides to cross his mind, he's always got some funny stuff going on there. And Brandon doesn't like it because it's the Wednesday Night Wars against his show. Which I'll give him plenty of time to talk about his show, too. Boo, that show sucks. <laughs> uh, show? Can I say something really quickly? What's up, yo? 
Um, it looks like uh, the tag team match is about to start. Okay. Fun fact. Fun fact for everyone. Okay, that's cool for them. Um, I actually have a live report in from one of my friends, Joe Joe Kent, friend of the show. Just want to give him a shout out. He's been texting me, letting me know how things are going out there. He said, uh, but the before the show was absolutely dead. There was absolutely no tailgating, if very little. Uh, people weren't really excited outside the arena. It was pretty dead. But he said now that he's finally in his seat, there's tons of RVD chants, and things are really starting to heat up. So hopefully we'll have a really hot crowd tonight. That's a good thing I didn't go. I could. I should have told Greco to text me because I know Greco and Palmer are there too. Crap. Uh, so I forget who the heck I, I left off on. Who who hasn't answered yet? Sean, did you answer your uh, Money in the Bank All Stars pick yet? Uh, I didn't. Um, I reckon it's going to be Randy Keith Orton's going to win. Whoa. Okay. Yep. Um, it's, he's going to cash in at the night at, when before the night is over. Do you and think he's going to be punt, a heel turn? He's going to punt John Cena in the head. In the skull. Yep. Punt him. You think he's going to talk about his divorce afterwards and, and tell everyone that? He's done everything for WWE, including divorcing his wife, and that's why he's he's done it. And he's become WWE champion. That that no, that's why he's gone on his losing streak because he divorced from his wife, and it was the worst yeah. year of his life. And now he's yeah. going to win the title as redemption. Yeah, and he has to beat John Cena because, of course, he's never beaten John Cena. He's going to cash in to pay the legal fees. <laughs> hey, he made out like a bandit in that freaking divorce. He did. All right, uh, who else has done it? Burhan, did you get your pick in this one? Um, I didn't. I believe it's Daniel Bryan. And believe it or not, I believe that it's because of the fact that Bryan has gotten such a solid push. He's beaten Randy Orton cleanly and in an epic match. You know, um, it, in terms of his character, I believe that they probably will turn Bryan Hill. And maybe due to the connection between the Bella Twins and Cena and Bryan, they may even add that into the storyline mix between the two, so that could happen. Um, anybody else I wouldn't mind seeing win the MRTB would be Christian. And we still don't know who, who the guy is that's going to be replacing Kane in this as well. At, at this point, it doesn't look like anybody is. Yeah, well, it could be fake Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> even better, it's fake Razor. <laughs> or... or. Isaac Yankum, DDS. Okay, okay. <laughs> Drew, I don't think we got to you. Your pick for the Money in the Bank All-Stars? Um, I, I, I kind of don't want to be the norm here and say it's Dan and Brian, but I kind of have to, mainly because there's really no one else in here uh, that could actually win it, in my opinion. All right, that, that's fair. Um, Brandon, I believe you're the last one i got to get to. Your thoughts on the Money in the Bank All-Stars? Yeah, last but certainly not least. Um, well, look, clearly they're going to use Punk for, for Brock Lesnar on SummerSlam, so he's not winning. Uh, Orton, yeah, it's a possibility. Uh, but again, I think that it all goes down to the, this, the classic saying: "Gather ye rosebuds while ye may." WWE, you have a hot thing in Del- uh, Daniel Bryan. Put the money in the bank contract on him. You don't have to have him cash it in immediately. If you put it on him, it'll still establish him as a main event player for the foreseeable future, without having to put the belt on him or without having to devote significant amounts of story to him. So I think Daniel Bryan's doing it because I guess I, it's his time. It's his it's his time for a star to be made. And I'm going to go ahead and agree with you two gentlemen. I'm going to be going with Daniel Bryan, and I don't care if it's the obvious one, and I, I'm okay with that. Sometimes obvious is right, and I'm just going to follow up what Brandon said. Get it while the timing is good. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, Michael. Daniel Bryan's never been hotter. In fact, I can't think of anyone who's caught fire like the way that Daniel Bryan has in the last few months. If WWE picks someone else, I'm not going to say you guys are wrong for thinking they will, but I'm going to say WWE is wrong if they put that briefcase on anybody else. I agree. I totally agree. Because it's really changed my mind. (laughs) He has the potential to be the next big star in, in WWE's eyes. He could be the next face or next heel in the company. Um, CM Punk and John Cena, you know, these guys are very solid in their spots, solid in their positions. They can branch these guys over into other feuds without hurting, without giving them the championship or hurting the WWE title division. I think by giving Brian this shot, they could easily make the third biggest star in the company. 
he has a chance to fill that underdog spot that John Cena is supposed to be filling, <laughs> which they keep saying over and over again. But he has a chance to actually be that part. And kind of, I mean, it, it's a weird comparison a little bit, but kind of also merge in with the Rey Mysterio spot. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Very similar to like Rey Mysterio, only it's actually believable maybe that he could beat some of these guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I never believe Rey Mysterio is going to be Big Show. Daniel Bryan, uh, maybe, just maybe he can pull his quickness and his you know intuitiveness into a way of getting a win out of that match. Plus, he's coming into it as being the technical star and being able to you know get out of all these moves and all that. Rey Mysterio was always just, hey, look at that flip. That was it. Yeah. So my favorite is Daniel Bryan as a second. I would have said CM Punk. Uh, but because, of, uh, as Brandon reminded me, he's going to be having his feud going in with Brock Lesnar over the next few months. There's really no reason to put it on him unless they just plan on sitting the briefcase on his shoulder for a while. Rob Van Dam and Randy Orton, I think, are two other possibles. Um, Rand, uh, Randy Orton, just because he hasn't done much in a while and it's time to get him back into that main event area. And Rob Van Dam, it's Philadelphia. It's his big return. It would have been a good feel-good moment. Christian and Sheamus, I don't think, have a snowball's chance in hell, unfortunately. No. Um, and with that, we'll wrap up Money in the Bank All-Star Talk. Actually, I have one more thing I want to postulate with you guys, and that is if we do see a, an open spot replaced, if we do decide to have someone come in and substitute for Kane, who would it be, and how would that affect this match? Kofi Kingston is a possibility because I think the time frame is right from his coming back from his shoulder. Uh, while he won't win the match if he's in it, he will certainly make it a little bit more interesting because you have that guy in a ladder and, like, four other people, he will give you a genius spot. Shelton Benjamin. Out. Shelton Benjamin is another one. Again, you give the it's, it's something with the African Americans. You give them the ladder. And, <laughs> uh, and, my friend just sent me a text message of uh, the desk for the pre-show, and it looks like it's Vicky Guerrero, Kofi Kingston, and Big Show. So Kofi's in the building. Kofi's in the building. Could nobody's be. nobody's falling in. Could yeah, be Evan Bourne, but he's probably at home getting high. <laughs> Someone I in like uh, Bennett. Who? Ring of Honor, Mike Bennett. Oh, Mike Bennett. <laughs> I was like, who? You mean, Miss, you mean Mr. Maria Canellis? Even, 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 saying the, even saying the English way, I don't know who the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Even I will say that guy, Mike Bennett. Who the fuck is Mike Bennett? <laughs> Mike Bennett. Um, someone that uh, came up with the idea in one of the Smart Out Moment comments I actually thought was kind of neat is Brock Lesnar. You know, we not have him come out in the very beginning of the match, but, you know, about three quarters of the way through the match, all of a sudden just the music hits. Paul Heyman comes out with him on the mic saying, I brought my guy, he's the new fellow, and I've worked it out. And Brock Lesnar just comes in and wrecks everybody. Or he just That'd wrecks awesome. CM Punk. I think that's you, what it You could be. even have him and Punk sort of um, going after each other at the end of the match, sort of uh, fighting each other all the way up to the ramp and, and Punk whacking him with chairs and stuff like that. Uh, and then have whoever sort of grabs the briefcase like Brian go up there and, and get the win. That's kind of cheap. Just use Brock as a way to, to you know distract Punk and ma- make him not look like he's uh, bad for losing this match. Yeah. That's good. All right, guys, any other thoughts on All-Stars before I wrap this up? Nope. All right, fantastic. We're going to go into our final match, which is for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. It is John Cena defending his title against Mark Henry. Now, a few weeks ago on Raw, we saw Mark Henry tease us, saying that he's going to be retiring, and he cut out one of the most Oscar-worthy speeches that you will ever see on a WWE television show. But it was all a ruse, a fake, a sham. (gasps) Bamboozled. Mark Henry, world's strongest slammed John Cena after going for the handshake, and now that made him the number one contender for some reason. Was it wrong that I actually reached Climax at that exact same time? Yes, it was very wrong. Damn it. (laughs) <laughs> should be but it was so right. It was so right as well. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't even know what else to say about this match now. So we'll just get to your guys' predictions. Drew White, your thoughts on John Cena and Mark Henry. Um, It's like you said. You know, the past few weeks, Mark Henry has been doing some of the best promo work from that WWE has seen this year. But it's kind of unfortunate because most likely John Cena is going to come out on top, and I think Cena will... Uh, just do his four or five moves of doom and come out with the, the W here. The Super Cena win. Mr. Burhan, your thoughts? Um, I'm going with John Cena. And, uh, again, I want to see Mark Henry win this. I just don't believe it's going to be his time, and I don't believe he's going to be retiring too soon. So they, they're they going to keep this feud going maybe until SummerSlam. Tony? 
I want Mark Henry, but I don't even think he has a 10% chance. I think this is all Mark Henry beats down John Cena. John Cena gets an AA, and that's kind of all she wrote. The only other thing is... Because John Cena is the underdog. So I'm going to correct you. I'm looking at the fan poll, and actually Mark Henry has a 16% chance to win. (laughs) So that's not too much better. Um I, then I think, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, I think that Mark Henry continues his beatdown on John Cena, and then Mar- uh, RVD cashes in. All right, Sean, your thought on the main event, John Cena, Mark Henry. John Cena's going to win. Mark Henry, World's Strongest Slam. Randy Orton's music hits. So you're going to stick with Randy Orton now? Yeah, boy. All right. I, I like that idea. I'm not going to completely turn away. Uh, who's left? Brandon, are you the last one left? I think I'm the last one left, last but certainly not least. Um, while I would love to see Mark Henry doing it, it would be an icing on top of a glorious nearly 17-year career. I mean, look, how old, Drew, how old are you? You're I like, am 17. You are as old as Mark Henry's career in WWE. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I would, I, of course, I would love to see it as, like, you know, reward for a glorious 17-year uh, career, Mark Henry win the belt, but... If I was a betting man and uh, our friends in the UK actually have this ability to bet on professional wrestling, which I really, really, really wish we could here because I could make a fucking killing in this country, uh, I think John Cena is going to win. And it's just logic. Just logic tells me that. Um, but, you know, anything, like uh, Grill Monsoon once said, anything is possible in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, Mark Henry could win. And maybe if he wins, maybe we see a cash in there, too. Yeah, anyone else think we're going to be seeing any kind of uh, shenanigans happen here? Any money in the bank cash-ins? Or... I just think it's a possibility. I'm not going to definitively say, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's always a lingering possibility. It's one of the exciting like things about the money in the bank. Yes, always like a lingering fart. What? Uh, for me, I could see this pay-per-view as being a sort of a sleeper hit in terms of what we're going to see, because everything's up in the air, and I like that. I like the fact that everything's up in the air, and to Mark Henry's credit as well on this main event, he looks like a legitimate contender. He really does. He, he looks like the guy that could take the title. And, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to look like a total douchebag by saying this, but he has made Cena look like an underdog because Cena looks legitimately afraid. And Mark Henry's certainly been the fan favorite going into this. Every week he comes out, people love him. Yeah, and, you know, and there's a lot due to the fact he's progressed so much. I remember being a kid when he debuted in the WWE mm-hmm. uh, and watching his match against Jerry Lawler uh, when he was, like, defending Jake Roberts' honor. He was only and, half the man he is now. Yeah, and now look at him. He's just – it's amazing how far he's come. And, you know, I've, I've seen him from there to the Nation of Domination, to his teaming with D'Lo Brown, to his association with Jeff Jarrett, you know, to his, like – Association, brief association with Teddy Long, all the way up to his his new gimmick being like the Silverback and the 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 Hall of Pain. So it's great to see him in this position. And if anyone deserves to be here at this time, it's him. All right, guys. With that, we're going to wrap up our Money in the Bank talk. We're going to be doing our last bits here. Before we pass it over to start doing plugs, I just want to let everyone know if you would like to join us hosts in a conversation that will be going on during the whole Money in the Bank show, you could do so by going to smartoutmoment.com. That's smartoutmoment.com where you can find us talking in a little chat bar that's there on the side, and we'll be doing that through the whole pay-per-view so you can keep the conversation <laughs> going with us. <laughs> Drew says he remembers when he was two months old when he debuted. <laughs> 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 oh gosh! All right, since Tony has to go, he has to make a drive. I'm going to let Tony do his little plugs first. So, Tony, please tell us about what's wonderful in the world of Mango. All right, obviously, guys, check out SmartOutMoment.com for everything going on with that kind of stuff, and YouTube.com/slash Smack. No, that's not Smack Talk. Slash Smart Out Moment for Smack Talk. And, of course, check out fanboysanonymous.com for everything going along with that. I have to head out right now to go over to Daces and start covering the pay-per-view and all that. So I hope to see all you guys in the chat and on the live coverage. And uh, have fun, everybody. All right, Tony. Thanks for joining us, man. Catch you around. Drive safe. All right. Adios, everybody. All right. Next, we'll pass it over to Sean. Sean, what's good and wonderful in the world of Walker? Uh, well, I've started recently doing a Let's Play on my YouTube channel, at Sean the 1989. I'm doing a Pokemon Yellow Let's Play, so tune in for that. Um, Pokemon came out there. Uh, also, I've done a couple of posts for fanboys on Ominous.com, so read those and follow me on Twitter at Shaughnessy2K37. 
All right, Mr. Burhan, tell us what's wonderful in the world of Burhan. I'm going to also plug Sean's channel because the fact is it is fucking hilarious. Hmm. If you actually look at his commentary on on Pikachu and all the Pokemon and stuff, he he's pretty good. So guys, check that out. Um, also, I do Movie File. This is today is the last day of Bill Murray Fortnite, where I do everything in terms of Bill Murray, including playing Ghostbusters, uh, which I haven't finished. Yeah. Uh, doing like movie file reviews and also Fanboys Anonymous reviews on all things Murray including comic books and games and loads of other stuff I do a show called I Got Gameplay which I'm going to be uploading um, hopefully before the pay-per-view ends tonight I've done uh, it's also available on Blog Talk Radio as part of Mega Powers Radio it's hosted every Saturday at night at 8pm I haven't decided on what the uh, the topic's going to be but we discussed myself Nikki Mills Lee Garrisich and the man you're probably familiar with, Jeff Croup, <laughs> about gaming trolls. And you know what? I have to admit, Croup is pretty good on the show. So check that out, guys. It was stimulating conversation, awesome host. It was a great show, and I tried to get Brandon again, but that's was... you. That's who you replaced me with, really? Yes. really? Yes. Wow. All right. Now I will be. I will be trying to. Be... Wait, no, I can't do the next show. Next week is a street festival. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Is, is it Gay Pride? No. <laughs> it's Rosen Got Dutch. him. <laughs> it is. It was because I'm a huge fag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <this> asshole. <laughs> All right. Drew, please tell us what's wonderful in the world of white. Ooh, the world of white. <laughs> Let me think. Well, I'll just go ahead and do my usual plug. You can follow me on Twitter at, at DrewSifWhite, and I will do everyone's favorite plug, which is my... Big Blast Rentals plug, which if you need, if you live in Indianapolis, Indiana area, and you need either fuck, bounce houses or cornhole boards, just in case anyone needs that, what the fuck? Um, you can go to call, you can go to BigBlastRentals.com. It's, it's exactly how it sounds. It, that's how you spell it, at least. And you can look at our fine selection of uh, bounce houses, which we have. Uh, 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 three and one. We have a princess. We have a sergeant slaughter one. <laughs> fans out there. We also have a big sl- water slide one. Just in case you need a water slide. And we have cool stuff. So, yep, that's it. And what was that again? Big Bash Rentals? Big Blast. Big Blast yeah. Rentals. Just so, just so everyone knows. That's where you can get your... Yeah, you can also call 765-212-1521 as well. That's, how you, that's the number for the company. All right. And lastly, before I do myself, of course, Mr. Brennan Ligon, please tell us what's wonderful in the world of Ligon. Well, first of all, not much is wonderful in the world of Ligon, but that's a whole other issue that I will talk about on Sports <laughs> Anonymous. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you can hear me Tuesdays on this very radio station with uh, Peyton Burhand. And, hey, I invite any of you fine gentlemen uh, to join us as well for Geek Speak, where we basically – talk for two hours no real format or anything it's just kind of shooting the shit for two hours um we talk about geeky things and 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 stuff and really just random shit uh so check us out geekspeak.com or or do we have an actual website for geekspeak no we have a facebook we have facebook.com slash geekspeak live facebook.com slash geekspeak live um you can also listen to the show i was talking about earlier on dave castaldo's dream elite radio where i host try and talk sports for two hours but Usually just get distracted and end up talking about my life. Uh, it's Four Hawks Anonymous live every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Uh, Dream Elite Radio, blogtalkradio.com slash Dream Elite. Um, go like the Middle Village Wrestling page just because. Uh, go like Chris Caden's page because he just got married and what better wedding present than likes on his Facebook page. Um, support independent wrestling near you. Um, someone give I remember, me- guys. If it's if homosexuality isn't wrong, it's not wrong. And, no, and Brandon deserves to get married. Is it <laughs> right? Totally. <laughs> I, I am currently working on getting the cross seas marriage of Brandon Ligon and Michael Burhan together, so that they can finally live with each other in happiness. Well, I'm. I'd rather go over there, but. Ugh. Just, just, fine. Okay, I will bring you over. It's fine. I, but that's again. That's purely just so I could go watch, go to see Manchester United games. That's, oh, that that's how it is, is it? Okay. That, Pure, hey man, I'm, at least I'm up front. I'm playing my cards on the table. Well, hey, Burhan can just grow a beard, and then, Brennan, you can shave your beard and put it on your eyebrows, and you guys can just trade places. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I like my beard. And I like my eyebrows. <laughs> I like his eyebrows, too. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to finish this out here. If you yeah. would uh, like to follow me personally on the Facebooks and Twitters, you can do so by the handle M R P A D E N. That's Mr. Payton. Uh, if you've enjoyed this show and you want to hear more wrestling ramblings, you can listen to myself, Brandon, and Mr. Burhan every Thursday night on Dream Elite Radio. That's blogtalkradio.com slash Dream Elite for keeping kayfabe where wrestling is still real to us. Damn it! <laughs> it's a Thursday Night Wars as we go head-to-head with TNA Impact, trying to put them out of business once and for all, and I think we're finally starting to make a dent on them, so we got to keep that going. Uh, this past week, we talked about Doink the Clown versus Mr. Perfect and their King of the Ring qualifying match from 1993, a fun little tribute to the man Doink the Clown. And this coming week, we're going to be doing something really awesome, a grocery store death match. So if you want to hear us talk about a grocery store death match, that'll be going down. And be sure to keep tuned to here on Mega Powers Radio, where we'll be doing our Monday Night Raw post show every Monday night, immediately following the conclusion of Monday Night Raw. Geek Speak on Tuesday nights, as Brandon said, at 8 p.m. The Dace Man Show, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. And I Got Gameplay on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. as well. And, of course, every Monday – or, excuse me, every – WWE pay-per-view on Sundays. We will be here for a pre-show, talking about the card, and, you know, breaking down things, taking your calls, all those things we do. So, I think that'll be a conclusion for our Money in the Bank pay-per-view pre-show here on Mega Powers Radio. For Brennan Ligon, for Michael Burhan, for Drew White, for Sean Walker, for Chris the Dace Man Dace, for David Castaldo, and for Anthony Mango, I'm Mike Payton. Thank you all for listening here on Mega Powers Radio.